Hi everyone. In our previous classes, we've been talking about the origins of the nationalist movement. We've, we've been linking the nationalist movement and um, the People's United Party way to the 1930s, where you had the origin of many of the labor movements within British Honduras. What is important to note is that the 1949 and 1950 devaluation um, basically uh, accelerated the movement towards an independent belief where people began to think about, look, if we're independent, we're going to have better things, or we're going to manage our own affairs, we're going to have some sort of agency in our government and a say in how our affairs are managed. Um, during the 1940s, uh, 50s, going up to the 60s, uh, there was also a push by the colonial government and also by some of the, um, some of the colonies to create the federation, which would be the West India Federation. In this case, the West India Federa Federation would entail all of the British or ex-British colonies would become one nation under a centralized government. And one of the justifications for it was that many of these small states or ma small islands were not ready for development and were not ready to become a nation itself. So the, the, the British colonial government was stating, look, alone you guys won't survive. So why don't you come together? And if you come together, it will allow you to share some sort of resources and you will elevate your status as an independent um, entity. However, many countries agreed and many countries did not agree. And one of the things to note about this is that George Price spoke fervently against the West India Federation. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be looking at how, um, or I'm sorry, what George Price said, how he said it, and why that influenced the idea of Belizean nationalism. So we're going to be dealing with three things. One, we're going to justify Price's opposition to the Federation, so why he was talking so strongly against the Federation. Two, we're going to examine Price's anti-British rhetoric. As I had stated, he was a very he was a nationalist, and why he was talking about um, independence at this point and, and, and against the Federation itself. And three, we're going to explain the British um, actions to the Brit in reaction, sorry, the British's reactions to the Belizean nationalist movement. So what did the British do as they saw that price was moving around and the nationalist movement had started? What did the British do? Obviously, they did not just stay calmly and um, waited for, for, for independence to eventually come. So what is a federation? Um, to start off, as I had stated, it is very important for us to understand what the British were trying to achieve by this. The British were basically stating that the small islands, the, the small islands were unable to manage their own affairs so in a way, it was a very um, dominant view that they had, whereby they thought that they were the only ones who could manage the affairs properly for each of these um, islands. So they said a federation would work. What is meant by this federation? Federation simply means that there is a group of states that is run by a central government. But within their own affairs, they could basically um, run their own affairs. For instance, you have um, in Mexico, you have different departments or states sorry that have their governors and their governors are able to make laws and make changes to the laws make decisions in relation to that particular state and then he would report to the central government which would be the federal government so it's very important to know uh, um, this thing so basically what the british were stating is we're going to have a central government but each of you islands are going to have your little local governments and you are going to have a say in what this, um, the federal government does. Um, ideas about this particular um, form of government came way early in the 1940s when there was a decolonization movement throughout the world. So throughout the world was becoming, um, was having a push against colonialism. However, the British were very strategic with this particular federation idea because what they were thinking about is that if they give um, independence and put the form of a central government with a federation they would have a lot more influence over how each area or each territory is governed through the federation so it was a strategic move for them as well but what this also did is that because the federation was going to unify everybody it meant that everybody or it meant that sorry you could have freedom of investment and freedom of movement as it relates to workers and this became a threat to British Honduras in particular because British Honduras, one, had an, um, an enormous amount of unoccupied land, two, had already a shortage of, of, of employment and if they feared that if people would come in, it would make the situation even more acute. So 
um, Price organized several meetings following the push of the of the um, dollar diplomacy and the anti-British rhetoric. Price began to organize um, several meetings at Battlefield Park. He began to bring in a lot of people. And in fact, one of the things that he did that was very important is, because, is that he began to um, call out for national unity. And at the end of every single meeting, he would come up with a set of resolutions which the people would support. And once the people supported his sets of resolutions, he would then write to the governor on behalf of the people. It's a very important political move. Because what he began to do is that he began to place himself as the leader or as part of the leadership, in this case, of these, um, these people that are talking directly against the Federation. And as I had stated, one of the major um, fears with Federation was immigration itself. So Price's rhetoric throughout the 1950s was down with Federation. And one of the things um, with down with Federation was that Again, there would be a higher level for co of competition for jobs, and there would also be a higher level of competitions for land. And the people in British Honduras were already having not access to, did not have um, a clear access to land, did not have an enormous amount of job opportunities. So they saw all of this federation business very nervously. And eventually, Price came up with the slogan of Down with Federation, but also with Birds of Passage. And one of the things that, 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 that he was talking about was that birds of passage referred to rich people that were coming into British Honduras and running for political position. So what he was talking about was basically, um, he was saying, look, these people are coming in, they're taking control of our resources, which should be our resources. And we also have a colonial government that is managing our resources, this should be our resources. So Judge Price begins to think, or create, sorry, an idea of us versus them. And this begins to fuel an idea of nationalism, of Belize, versus becoming a colony of British Honduras. Um, obviously, the British were not happy with this. The British were very upset with all of the... Well, actually, the British were very upset with the formation of the People's Committee. The British were very upset with the formation of the, of the People's United Party. They therefore created a political party called the National Party in 1951, merely one or two years after the um, PUP was formed and the... People's Committee was formed, um, and what they did is that they ma they mainly used a middle class group of people as base support, and they used British officials to run for political positions. What is important about this is that they began to use a base of Creole elites as well, and and what you see is that they begin to persecute the nationalist movement for for very simple things. For example. Um, the colonial government dissolved the PUP-dominated Belize City Council for neglecting to place a portrait of King George um, in its chamber. So imagine that. Only because they forgot to put a, a, a portrait of King George in its chambers, the Belize City Council was dissolved and a new election was called. That was, a very, to me, a very silly call, but it was made. Then eventually, um, PUP leaders such as uh, Richardson and Philip Goldson were taken to jail for an article justifying revolution. They were charged for sedition, for um, uh, encouraging people to go against the crown. So for today, this is what I want to do. Imagine that you are George Price. Imagine that you are fighting against um, the British, against the Federation, and that you are fighting for a nationalist sentiment. I want you to write, a, it doesn't have to be big, a one paragraph speech, and I want you to voice record it, and upload it to the page. That is your work for this week. Thank you.